Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now understand the female reproductive organ of the plant because we all already saw how male gametes are produced. So now it's time to see how the female gametes are produced and where are they produced. So here we will talk about the male reproductive organ which is the carpel or pistil. both are the same. We will also talk about megasporangium like how we had microsporangium. Similarly we have megasporangium which is uh, a part inside the carpel where uh, the female gametes are produced. We will also talk about the embryo sac which is the female gametophyte, like how pollen grains were the male gametophyte. Similarly, embryo sac are the female gametophytes. So we are going to talk about these three specifically in more detail. So let us first understand the structure of carpel. As I said, carpel and pistil, they both mean the same. So which structure is carpel? This entire structure, the central one is carpel. So this is how the carpel looks like. So the carpel again is broadly divided into three parts. That is this upper portion which is a little bit swollen. So this portion is called stigma. This tube like structure is called style. And this swollen bottom portion is called ovary. So stigma, style and ovary are the three major regions of the carpet. So let us quickly see what do each of them do. So let us start with ovary. So ovary is the swollen portion at the base. So it is the basal enclosed part of carpet. So if you see it is completely enclosed like this portion. So this is ovary and it is all enclosed. It is like you can think of uh, this uh, carpel like a bottle with uh, a swollen bottom. So the ovarian cavity is also called as locule. So this entire cavity inside, the entire space inside the swollen structure that is the ovarian cavity or it is also called as locule. Now inside the ovary is present the ovule. And the ovule is also known as the megasporangium. Like how you had microsporangium, the pollen sacs. Similarly, here you have another almost spherical structure which is called the ovule and it is present inside the ovary. So all the yeah, interesting things, that is the female gamete formation things, happen inside the ovule. So here you can see this structure which you see, this one this entire structure that is the ovule. So this ovule is present inside the ovary. You can see the green border line. So that entire structure in the inside part, it is all ovule or megasporangium. Ovules are attached to the cushion-like structure called placenta. Now there is a tissue which connects the ovary ovule to the ovary and that tissue is known as placenta. So placenta is very, very important. Now we had discussed about the placentation, the different types of placentation in uh, our previous class where we talked about the ads axial placentation, parietal, basal, free central. So they are where the different types of placentation. So just to uh, give a quick recap, uh, the example of the pea. So when you look at a pea, how does it look like? You see the small, uh, it is somewhat like this, a pea looks somewhat like this. The seeds are present attached to the ovary, right? So this is attached to a tissue called placenta. So that is basically placenta. The next is the style. And style is a tube-like structure that connects the ovary and the stigma. Because connecting the both connecting both of them is also very very important. Why? Because this tube is going to carry the pollen grains from stigma to ovary. Now when fertilization has to take place then the pollen grains will come to this part that is the stigma and then the pollen grain will pass through the style and finally it will reach the ovary and then from ovary it will reach the ovule and inside the ovule fertilization will take place. So the style does a very important job of carrying the pollen grains to the ovary. 
and the last one that is stigma which is located at the exposed end of the style that is this end so in this end it has it receives the pollen grains so this is the place where the pollen grains will be received so it acts as the receptive surface for pollen grains so here the pollen grains are collected and then the pollen grains pass through the style so these pollen grains will then pass through the style and finally it will reach the ovary So now let us talk about the structure of the megasporangium because megasporangium or ovule, whatever you call it, because this is the place where exactly the process of uh, female gamete formation occurs. Now, like in, in case of the male uh, counterpart, we saw that the microsporangium produced microspores, and those microspores later developed into pollen grains. So here also we will see that the megasporangium will produce megaspores and then one of those megaspores will develop into the egg cell and the egg cell is nothing but the female gamete. So let us see how it happens. Now before that let us understand the structure of the ovule. Now this is a detailed structure of the ovule. So here in this picture this entire thing is ovary. The pink colored structure and everything inside it is ovule. So that pink structure is being magnified here. So this is the structure of magnified structure of the ovule. Now let us understand the various parts of the ovule. First is the funicle and where is it located? We will see that. So funicle is this portion. So this portion which attaches it to the ovary. So this is the funicle. Next is the hilum and where is hilum? What is hilum? Very quickly see. Integuments, that is the layers. So these layers are the integuments. So then you can see the layers and they are integuments. Micropile. Micropile is the small opening which you see at one end of the opening. So here you can see the small opening and this opening is known as micropile. Chalaza. So where does chalaza just towards the opposite side of the micropile, the basal portion, that is the base of this ovule, this region is known as chalaza. So chalaza and the micropile are almost opposite to each other. Nucellus. Where is the what is nucellus? This portion is called nucellus. So basically it is a mass of it is a mass of cells which are located inside the integuments. So integuments are like the uh, outer layers and inside the integuments you have a mass of cells, they are called new cells. And finally the embryo sac. Where is the embryo sac? This central portion is known as the embryo sac. And why is it called embryo sac? Because inside this is contained the embryo. So the important cells, that is the female gametes, they are located inside the embryo sac. So this is very, very important. So we will also, so now you can actually see that inside the embryo sac, you actually get to see some cells, right, in orange color. So what are they? We will see them very soon. But before that, let us discuss about each of these parts a little more detail. So funicle, what is it? It is the stalk that attached ovule to placenta. As I said, the ovule remains connected to the placenta. Right? So what connects it to the placenta? There is a tube-like structure or stalk-like structure and this stalk-like structure is the funicle. Next is the hilum and hilum is nothing but the junction between the ovule and the funicle. So the funicle and the ovule, they are connected at a junction and that junction is known as the hilum. Integuments are nothing but the protective envelopes around the uh, ovule. So as you can see here, as I mentioned before also, that megasporangium is something which is very very delicate because inside that we are going to uh, form the female gametes. So it needs to be protected. And so, and for the sake of that protection, we have multiple layers outside it, and these layers are called integuments. So here in this picture, you can actually see there are two layers, and both of them form the integuments. So these integuments can be one or many in number. So it is not necessary that there has to be one layer or there has to be two layers or three layers. It can be one, it can be many. 
Micropyle, it is a small opening at the tip of integument. So you see the integuments, they uh, terminate, but even after that, a small gap is left. So this small opening is called micropyle. Chalaza is the basal part of ovule. So it is like, see, the shape of the ovule is somewhat like this. So this part, the tip is the micropyle and the other side which is like the base that is the chalaza. So sometimes in some books you will have the figure like this. So in that case this is be your micropyle and this will be your chalaza. New cells are the mass of cells which are enclosed within the integuments as I mentioned here. So here you have those cells. They are useful in food storage. So they store food. Why the food is required? Because when the fertilization takes place inside the embryo sac, so a zygote will be formed right after fertilization. So they would need some energy. They would need food for all the activities. And this food will be provided by the cells of the new cells. Embryo sac, it is the female gametophyte as I said. And it is located in new cellars. So if you see it is located in the new cellars. So this is all new cellars. And inside the new cellars is the embryo sac. So now let us quickly compare the ovule structure of an angiosperm with that of a gymnosperm. Because there are quite a few things which are different in angiosperms and they are different in gymnosperms. However, in this lesson, we are uh, most of the time we are discussing about the angiosperms, but uh, the basic concept will remain the same. It is just that uh, in some of the structures, there will be some differences. So one such example is the ovule. So let us quickly have a look. So in angiosperm ovule, the ovules are located in the ovary, but in gymnosperm, there is no ovary. So we don't have an ovary at all. So the ovules are like, it, it's like in free. It is not covered by anything. So you can look at the diagram here. So this is the angiosperm ovule where you have, this is the ovule. This internal thing is the ovule. Outside that you have the ovary. But here there is no ovary at all. So in angiosperm, the ovules develop into seeds inside the fruit after fertilization. In gymnosperm, ovules develop into naked seeds after fertilization. So that is one difference because since the ovary is not there, after fertilization, the ovary itself turns into a fruit. Now, in case of gymnosperm, since the ovule, ovaries are not there, so obviously there will be no fruit. So what will happen after fertilization? The ovules will turn into seeds, but they will be naked seeds. They will not be covered by anything. In angiosperm, double fertilization takes place, whereas in gymnosperm, simple fertilization. What is double fertilization? Now, as we go ahead, we will see in the fertilization process that two fusion takes place inside the embryo sac of the uh, angiosperm. So what are the two fertilization? Because there are two male gametes and we will see that there are two female gametes as well. One is the egg cell and the other one is the polar nuclei. Now we will talk about that a little later as we go ahead. So two fusion take place. But in case of gymnosperm, there is just one fusion which takes place. Since once we, one fusion takes place, that is why it is called simple fertilization. Whereas in angiosperm, it is called double fertilization. So these are some of the differences between the angiosperm and gymnosperm ovule. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors.